few weeks ago, Aaron Patterson, aka Tenderlove, wrote an excellent blog post about the thread-safe option in Rails and how it will likely be default in production in Rails 4. In this episode, I'm going to explain what this thread-safe option does and how it might affect your deployment and development when it's enabled. First, I'm going to create a new Rails application so that we have something to experiment with. I'll just call it Thready, and then I'll open that up. Now, if we check out the production environment config file, there we will find that the thread safe option is currently commented out, but in a new Rails 4 application, this will likely not be the case. However, it's important to understand that enabling this option doesn't mean that your application magically becomes multi-threaded. Let's see exactly what this thread safe option does. Well, if we check out the source code of this method, you can see it basically just sets four other options. The first three of these options have to do with how the application loads, basically telling it to do eager loading so it will preload the entire Rails application when it starts up, instead of relying on auto-loading behavior, which is not thread safe. So this leaves us with the fourth option here, allow concurrency, and that basically tells Rails to not use the rack lock middleware. You can see that if I run the rake middleware command in development here that a rack lock middleware is one of the first things that the request runs into. But now if I run that same command and set the Rails environment to production where I enabled the thread safe mode, uh, there you will find that the rack lock middleware is nowhere to be found. So what exactly does this rack lock middleware do? Well, let's take a look at the source code. It's quite simple, about 25 lines long. And when a new request comes in, it's going to call lock on a mutex, which is just an instance of a mutex class. And when it's done with the request, it will unlock it. So this ensures that only one request is processed at a time, synchronously. Now let's do some testing of this behavior to better understand what's going on. I'm going to generate a new controller uh, with an action so that we can experiment with it. So in this controller action, I'm just going to have it sleep for one second and then render the text uh, foobar. And then I'll start up the Rails server in development mode. Uh, keep in mind that this is using the Webrook server. And then in a separate tab, I can make a uh, curl request to that uh, Rails application's foobar action. And we get foobar in response, so that works. But now what if we run the same curl command five times, and I'll use an ampersand here so that it forks off the process each time, so all these requests will be made asynchronously. Well, each request is coming in one at a time here. You can see after one second, I get the foobar response. So it's still processing each request separately, even though they were all made at the same time. Well, let me close out this Rails server and start it up in a production environment instead. So this is where I have the thread safe configuration option enabled. Now I'll try running that curl command five times again, all at the same time. And I get foobar in response nearly all at the same time as well. So now because we no longer have the rack lock middleware, the requests are being processed asynchronously. So at this point, you may be wondering, if this thread safe option allows requests to come in concurrently, does this mean I suddenly need to start writing thread safe code? Well, not necessarily. This depends entirely on your production setup. Most of the popular Rails servers today, such as Unicorn or Fusion Passenger, will only pass one request at a time to each worker process. So this means even with this thread safe option enabled, it will still only handle requests separately. We can try this out quickly by going into the gem file and uncommenting a unicorn here, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install that. And then we can use the unicorn command to start up our Rails application in the production environment, and I'll keep the port at 3000 uh, for consistency. And now if I repeat that same curl command five times, uh, this will process each request individually because that's how Unicorn works when there's only one worker. So in a sense, the web server takes on the role of the mutex lock here, and if we did have rack lock middleware in place, that would just be unnecessary overhead when used in combination with something like Unicorn. So that is why this thread safe option will be enabled by default in production. It moves the decision to do requests concurrently into how you set up the production environment. But don't forget that this config option does more than just remove the mutex lock. It also adds eager loading behavior, which could cause some unexpected side effects depending on your app. So if you'd go on enabling this option, be sure to test it thoroughly in some kind of staging environment before actually deploying it to production. Also, I want to point out that there's talk about renaming this config option in Rails 4 to better clarify what exactly it's doing. Now, we know that Unicorn and Passenger don't support multiple threads, but what if we do want to run our application in a multi-threaded environment? Well, for that, Puma is an option. This is a web server that is based on Mongrel, and it can run any Rack application concurrently. It supports JRuby, Rubinius, and even MRI. 
Let's give this a try. In my gem file, I'll uncomment Unicorn and add Puma here, and you'll need to run Bundle to install it. And then I'll start up my Rails server using Puma in the production environment. And then when I run that curl command a few times, I get the results back instantly because requests are being processed concurrently through threads thanks to Puma. Now Puma is a little bit constrained under Ruby MRI due to its global interpreter lock. You may still find the need to start up multiple processes running Puma uh, to take full advantage of the CPU, especially if you're running multiple cores. However, JRuby and Rubinius have better thread support, so Puma will likely function better under those environments. Now if you are using Puma or any server that supports multiple threads, you have to be very careful to ensure that all code in your Rails application is thread safe. Let me give you an example of unsafe code here. Let's say in this controller we have a class level variable called counter and I'll start it at zero, but let's say we want to increment it each time in this bar action. And I wanna do that and sleep in between reading and writing to it. So I'm going to set this to a local variable and let's increment it after, by one after sleeping. And then let's write it back to the counter uh, class variable. And then let's print this out in the uh, uh, result here. I'll first start up the server in development mode so we can see how this behaves in a single threaded environment. And when I run that curl command four times, it's going to print out one, two, three, four with a one second delay in between because it's processing each request synchronously. But if I restart the server and do it under the production environment with Puma, and then run that same curl command four times, and I get one as the output for each result. And that's because those requests are happening concurrently so it doesn't have time to increment the counter. So this is why you should be very careful in working with data and memory that is shared between threads, like this counter class variable is. Uh, to get around this problem, we can uh, set up a mutex lock similar to how the rack lock middleware worked. Uh, we can make a new mutex here, which will just be an instance of the mutex class. So now, whenever reading or writing from shared data, we can wrap this in a mutex lock. Uh, we can do that by using the uh, synchronize method and then wrapping that in a block and then ending the block will unlock uh, the mutex. Now I restarted the server off camera, so let's try running this curl command again four times. And here it increments on each request like we expect because we wrapped it in a mutex lock, which means it's going to wait at each request before it processes that counter increment. So here are some things to watch out for in your Rails app that you should wrap access to in a mutex. Uh, class variables like I have here, or instance variables at the class level, or global variables of course, or how about uh, constants? Because even a constant can be changed in Ruby, it'll issue a warning, but still possible. And also don't forget that the value of this can be immutable as well. Strings are immutable in Ruby, so we would probably want to do a freeze on this, so that would turn it into an immutable string. Also, keep in mind that the code within the class itself is also shared memory, so you should avoid inserting methods into a class dynamically after the application has loaded. Thankfully, making a Rails application thread safe may not be as big of a job as it might seem. You often aren't needing to share mutable data like this, and if you are, you might want to look for an alternative because there's probably a better way to do it anyway. Probably the most difficult part of this process is to ensure that all of the gems that your application uses and their dependencies are all thread safe. Uh, maybe check the readme of each one, and if there's no thread safe mentioned there, uh, post something on the issue tracker and uh, have a few people look through the source code to see if they can find any uh, thread safety issues. It'd be nice if we can get the majority of the Rails related gems thread safe. Now something else to be aware of when working with a multi-threaded Rails app is a database connection pool. You can see by default this is set to five, which determines how many database connections are available to be used at a single time in a Rails process. And I find this number to be one less than this actually, so in my case, four here. To see this in effect, I'm going to comment out this mutex block so that we can make a lot of requests at one time. So as before, making four requests to our Rails app works without a problem, we get them all back instantly. But what if I try to make uh, 12 requests instead? Well, we're going to get four requests at a time because that's the limit of how many database connections we can have open at once. Now, even though this action doesn't use the database, Rails will still reserve a database connection for the duration of each request. And if one isn't available, it will wait until a one is and time out at five seconds. So this means if a request takes a while, maybe this takes 10 seconds instead of a one second, then we would start to get errors because a database connection isn't available for the other requests within five seconds. 
So just be aware that this number might be your bottleneck if you want to support, say, 15 requests at one time on a single process. Uh, this will only limit it down to four or five. So you might want to bump this number up, but this depends on how many concurrent connections you want at a time to your database also. So I restarted my Rails app with that connection pool limit of 15, and when I run this request again, you can see it handles all 12 requests at the same time because it's able to uh, do that many database connections at the same time. Well, that's it for this episode on this thread-safe config option. Just keep in mind that the effect of enabling this option will depend greatly on what kind of web server setup you have in production. If you're going with a multi-threaded setup, just be sure that your Rails app is thread-safe and all the gems that it depends on. And also, it's a good idea to test everything thoroughly whenever enabling this option in some kind of staging environment. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.